Hi everyone, Comic Reviewer here, this time reviewing on Earwig and the Witch Ghibli Film Review. Now, as you know, Earwig and the Witch is meant to be another film directed by Goro Miyazaki, who is also the son of the legendary animator Heo Miyazaki. And much like last year, I did review his film from Up on Pompey Hill that I definitely enjoyed. And much like Tales on Earth Sea is based on the novel of the same name by Diana Wayne Jones. And I know Earwig and the Witch is technically the black sheep of the Ghibli film fan community, but for me, I actually enjoyed it. I actually thought it wasn't bad. It still got the same Ghibli humour, the same Ghibli style of storytelling, and so on. So, the premise of the film is meant to take place during the 1990s, where a young woman leaves her child at St. Morold's Home for Children, and we see how years later, a young girl who is now known as Earwig, is taken in by Bera Yaga and the Mandrake. And of course, we see how she slowly tries to wrap things around her little finger, tries to kind of get them to do what she wants, and at the same time, is kind of meant to try and learn more truth about her background, and more truth about the people who took her in. Now, the two characters, Bea Yaga and Mandrake, are different. I feel Bea Yaga is more of a person who's strict, cold, and distant, while the Mandrake is maybe a guy who's moody, but you can kind of tell does care about Earwig. And there are kind of employments that he's the father of Earwig, like he's a bit more softer to her, while Bear Yarg is a bit more harder. Basically, his room is close to hers, like a father and daughter thing, and at the same time, it's also implied in some flashbacks that Earwig's mother and him did actually seem to have more of a relationship. And I wouldn't have been surprised if this was where it was going. And I think for the most part, I would say, the animation isn't really that bad. I think what Goro Miyazaki, as well as the team behind Ghibli Studios were doing, was just taking a break from hand-drawn animation and going with something newer, fresher, and better. I think that's kind of the point with animation, because... I feel what Japan is trying to do is show them that they can do 3D animation as well. Much like the 2016 Berserk anime, basically the Pokemon first movie remake. And I think it's the same way looking at animation in other countries. You can kind of tell when China did White Snake, they actually had a more 3D-ish animation. I think when you look at films in America that were like Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge, as well as in the Injustice movie, they show that they could do Japanese animation despite it being in America. And I think it's the same way looking at British animation, because we've I think the British are known for doing puppets basically clay animation and so more, but we do take a break from it and focus on something different. And I think for the most part, I think Earwig's character really does work. Like, you can tell she's a little annoyed and angry that she's being treated like a servant and a slave, but you can kind of tell she does kind of want to try and wrap things around her little finger. We technically do see how at the St. Mollard's home, how the per how basically Miss Mollard, as well as the other children there, do care and respect her. And you can tell Miss Jenkins does, I mean Miss Mollard does technically wants to kind of see Earwig in a much better place. 
And I think for the most part, I just think a lot of Ghibli animation fans expected impossible standards or more from this one. But I think I do give Goro Miyazaki and the team credit on taking a break from hand-drawn animation and focusing on something newer, fresher, and different. So, I think for the most part, Earwig and the Witch is a hidden gem deep down, and I think people just technically put this way under the rug. And I think the ending isn't that bad, because we've seen Ghibli cop out in their stories a little bit, like when you kind of got Whisper from the Heart, or basically Kiki's Delivery Service, when it ended, they actually went to the credits, and when you got the cat returns, it did, did felt quick, and not really having much with the stories. But I think this one, they just knew what they were doing. So I think it deserves a thumbs up. Still good, and still alright. So, Comic Reviewer here, signing out.